Hi there, welcome back to your Patros Review. In this episode, Single White Female 2 The Psycho, directed by Keith Samples in the year 2005. Yeah, another one of those. Hi there, welcome back to your Patros Review, your guide to the wild world of science fiction, action, horror cinema with me, your host, Melissa Ficker. If you want to spell my name, just look at the channel name. Now, in this episode, we take another director video film off the shelf and check it out. In this case, it's Single White Female 2 The Psycho which was directed by Keith Samples in the year 2005. It actually premiered in the US on 25th of October 2005. It was also written by a couple of people who did the Wild Things sequels. Now this particular film was released around the world by Sony Pictures Home Entertainment as a director video title and almost identical releases. The only difference between the US Region 1 DVD and Australian Region 4 DVD of this film is that while the Region 1 has absolutely no subtitles whatsoever, while the Region 4 and other international discs all have subtitles of various languages. And in terms of supplement, they all have just about trailers, that's it. Now, the 2000s saw a huge boom in the director video market, as a flood of cheap B-grade DTV sequels assaulted the video store shelves like an invading army. Most of these director video sequels, as well as the infamous string of director video crud that Steven Seagal made his negative reputation making during that decade, came from Sony Pictures, which made a motz on the market by mounting cheap director video sequels to just about every film in their catalogue was all utterly ridiculous to see. In the case of the somewhat redundantly titled Single White Female 2 The Psycho, this was a cheap director video sequel to the cult classic 1992 saga thriller Single White Female, which for those who don't know, was a modest hit for the 1992 theatrical season with Jennifer J Jason Lee and Bridget Fonda playing two roommates whose existence in a large upscale apartment comes unstuck when one of them indulges their insanity complex and goes apeshit. Essentially a slasher film with the slasher being a mentally unbalanced woman instead of somebody like Jason Voorhees. In Single White Female 2, we have Kristen Miller as Holly Parker, yeah, real original name guys, <laughs> a somewhat bitchy PR executive who discovers that her roommate, also her best friend, also a fellow worker at the same PR firm, has tricked her into heading to another city on a fake business trip. Or so she can screw Holly's boyfriend behind the back. And by the way, they're actually competing for a promotion that only one of them would get, and Holly was only with this boyfriend because he was a client of the firm and she, she, he was helping her out with a job, basically giving her an unfair advantage. <laughs> now once Holly learns this, in fact she walks on, in on them, she decides to leave the apartment. Deciding for a new home, Holly goes for the local newspaper listings and answers an ad made by Tess, a shy nurse who seems easy to make friends with, so she moves in. But as Holly and Tess become accustomed to each other in the same flat, Holly, who seems to have, mm, let's just say, pro her own problems with respecting a roommate's privacy in borderline inappropriate ways, more on that later on, discovers that Tess is hiding her own demons, mainly in that she has been euthanizing her sick patients, in addition to frequenting an SM club, and keeps making suicide packs with friends that she keeps backing out of, even while the friends keep their end of the deal. So basically, the friends commit suicide, she backs out of it stays alive. <laughs> Holly's boyfriend returns only to be sent to hospital comatose when Tess uses her medical knowledge to drug him and claim that he was trying to sexually assault her, forcing Holly to figure out a way to stop Tess from adding her to a suicide packed fan club, a club which all have jackets saying, Tess fucked us over real bad and she's coming after you. Almost all of the director video sequels that Sony flooded the market with during the 2000s were actually more or less remakes of the original films, with only a slight connection to the themes of the originals. I have a name for these films, Paraquels. Remakes of the original that built a market to the sequels despite being alternate retellings of the first film. If you want to spell this, P-A-R-A-Quell. Historically speaking, we've had classic examples from Armando de Osorio's cult classic Blind Dead series, and in the telepic world, the turn of the century chameleon trilogy from Paramount, of which I'm a huge fan of. Expect me to review both of those in the future. Now, as for Single White Female 2, the story is essentially an original film has similarities to another bigger film, or an obvious ripoff of fan fiction script, and given sequel status by the company to make a quick buck, but at least having the sense not to release it theatrically, otherwise the fans will be furious enough to bury the studio's chances of popularity. This particular sequel is just an obvious ripoff of the original, which the original film has detractors, but it was a decent film with big name stars giving somewhat enjoyably trashy performances. The follow up fails to do that, instead of being a pal retread for the basic plot structure of the original. Only with the three writers, or men, who were all responsible for painting those Wild Thing sequels that were the closest thing that Sony's direct-to-video sequels had to being a major franchise, 
inexplicably resisting the urge to give the film any sort of sex appeal. In fact, aside from some brief boob shots from extras at the S&M nightclub that test frequents, there is very little nudity seen here, and nothing from the two main female cast members, which is somewhat stupid as Jennifer Jason Lee and Bridget Fonda were big name stars by the time they did the original film, but had no problems going nude. Whereas Christian Miller and Alison Lang, the latter actually having provided some nudity in one of her first films from a half decade early in somewhat dubious circumstances, were still unknowns by the time of this film, yet they seem to have no nudity clauses in their contracts, which hurts their prospects since the date showed some skin. They would have at least had some more fans, and this film would be much more better regarded. And almost none of the violence you expect in demand from this type of film. Now, the acting is somewhat decent, surprisingly enough, but the actors are pretty much given nothing substantial to work with other than trashy cliches. Yeah, not much material, but at least they, they do a pretty good job with it. Somewhat, I mean, no overacting, no underacting. It's just pretty much spawned with this one. And... The plot also seems to go into autopilot for most of the film, without any sort of novelty value or worthwhile giving to hook the viewer onto. So while this isn't the worst example of the depths of the Sony Pictures 2000 direct view market, it does come pretty damn close to sinking under the sewage level. A disappointing film that should have played things trashier but ended up having its restraint hobbling it critically. And by the way, I did mention that I was going to talk about the borderline inappropriate behavior that Holly Parker engages in with her roommates. She goes through their belongings and spies on them. This is by today's standards somewhat unacceptable, and would today's legal system have Holly charged with some type of course of control DV offense? But back then it was normal, so don't let that spot whether the masochistic enjoyment you plan to have with this one. Now for gore nudity. There's no gore, and even you expected this film to have some some blood, but only a little bit. And some brief mother boob shots from a sort of extras during the SM club scene, where Holly tells Tess to find out what she's up to in her free time, pretty much being the only nudity you'll see. Very stalkerish, if you ask me. At least, Tolly totally could have asked Tess to take her to that nightclub. <laughs> okay. As I mentioned with the DVD, Sony Pictures Home Entertainment released this around the world, obviously. And the only extras you'll find are basically trailers, that's it. And the, the American disc has no subtitles, but the Australian one does. Which is good for Aussie fans. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't do requests, but if you want to have a particular film in my collection, just hit me up in the comment section and answer. Oh, I forgot. The single white female 2, the cycle gets a D+, 3 out of 10. That's all it's getting. <laughs> so basically it means it's disappointing. Now, if you have any questions about DVDs or uh, or any titles you, you think I might have, just hit me up in the comment section and answer. I know Fairfield's pretty much in lockdown for another month. Ugh. Sucks. Oh, I'm keeping busy. Hope you guys are staying safe. Take it easy and relax. See ya.